Thank you for attending the 22nd Baptist World Congress. We pray that you have experienced God's call to unity and mission in fresh and unique ways. We are so glad you have joined our closing where we will celebrate the Lord's Supper together. As we begin this service, would you join with me in prayer in celebrating the global identity of the Baptist family and worshiping together around the world? Let's pray. God, we thank you for this gathering this week. We thank you for all our brothers and sisters that gathered with us this week as we sought to impact the world for Christ. We thank you for the new renewal we felt, God, as we've attended services and Bible studies and discussion groups, Father. And as we go into this last service, God, we thank you for helping us to remember the sacrifice that you made 
so that we could all come together. We praise you, God. We worship you. We thank you, Lord, for all that was said and all that was done. In the name of Jesus, we do pray this prayer. Amen, amen, and amen. Let's worship. A reading from the Word of God as it comes to us from the Old Testament book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and verses 11 through to 13. I read from the New Revised Standard Version. Let us hear the word of the Lord. For surely I know the plans I have for you says the Lord, plans for your welfare and not for harm, to give you a future with hope. Then, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. When you search for me, you will find me, if you seek me with all your heart. لأني عرفت الأفكار التي أنا مفتكر بها عنكم يقول الرب أفكار سلام لا شر لأعطيكم آخرة ورجاء فتدعونني وتذهبون وتصلون إلي فأسمع لكم وتطلبونني فتجدونني استطلبونني بكل قلبكم
Greetings, my beloved, in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We come to the, this closing uh, celebration, and I just want to welcome you to this celebration as we close the 22nd Baptist World Alliance Congress. Oh, what a great time we had together in these past few days, these times of celebration time of learning together and of being inspired. We bless the Lord for this diverse family in the Baptist World Alliance. A family where we come together to worship together, to learn together, and to be inspired together, and to work together as we seek to serve our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, in this final meeting, we gather together in hope. As Baptists, we rejoice in this shared hope that we have in our resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Living in hope, we together continue as the disciples of the Lord, called to serve. God and looking forward to be transformed, to be inspired, and to engage in an ongoing mission and to see God raising new leaders as we together hold hands to serve our God. As we consider this hope, we will be gathering to remember what the Lord has done for us. Reminding us of the death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. We are going to come together sharing in the Lord's Supper, sharing in the Holy Communion. Now I'm going to ask you to please get yourself ready. Wherever you are, make sure that you collect together the elements that we're going to use in sharing the Lord's Supper together. Get some bread and get some wine, some juice as we sit to share in the Lord's communion. For the past five years, I served as the president of the Baptist World Alliance for 2015 to 2020 and I want to thank you all thank you for your support for your prayers thank you for having welcomed me welcome us to share with you in your conventions in your local churches we bless the Lord for the great time we have and I'm not saying this just here standing alone, but I express these things on behalf of the whole team that we served together in the past Quenquenia. And special thanks go to the officers of the Baptist World Alliance who served with me from 2015 
to 2020. And I'd like to first, I want to mention them by name, but start first with our treasure. I like to say to Karen Fossum from the United States, my beloved sister, thank you so much for the great work you are doing for the Lord. To our first vice president, Jan Satrid, my beloved brother from Norway, just want to say thank you. We have enjoyed serving the Lord together. To all the VPs, the, all the, the vice presidents of the World Alliance, uh, Ernest Adju Gamfi, my beloved brother from Ghana, yes, thank you. Thank you for the great work. Thank you for having served alongside with us. Jerry Kallel from the United States. Thank you, my brother. Thank you from, for uh, Julius Cesar from Haiti. Allow me to say merci beaucoup. Thank you, my beloved brother. Tapan Chaudhry from Bangladesh. Thank you so much for your service to the Lord. My beloved sister Myung Chu from Australia and Korea. Dear Myung, I want to say thank you for the time and the commitment you have given to the Lord. Michael Okoko from Uganda. My beloved brother, African brother. Thank you so much, Michael. We have enjoyed your service and your leadership. To Dimitrina Opranov from Bulgaria. Didi, my beloved sister, we salute you. We thank you for your service for the Lord. Thank you so much. The Baptist World Alliance appreciates your service. Jorge Quentores from Chile. I want to say thank you. Thank you for your service. God bless you, my beloved. Luis Roberto Salvado from Brazil. I know that you would have loved for us to be in your country, but even so, we were just want to say thank you. Brigado, my beloved brother. God bless you. Thank you for your service to the Lord. And to my sister, own sister, Naomi Talaloid from the United States, sis. It was wonderful to serve with you. Wonderful that you have committed your service to the Lord and have served, we have served together. And uh, last but not least, Anselm Warwick from Trinidad and Tobago. Anselm, my brother, I want to say thank you. Thank you for your service and we appreciate the work that you've done for the world alive. And I want just to thank our general secretaries, both Elijah Brown and his immediate predecessor, Neville Callum. It was a joy to serve with both of you, starting with Neville, great time we've served together. Elijah, thank you, my beloved brother. We've enjoyed the great times together. And I want just to thank you for the commitment you've shown, you've given to the work of the Lord. People don't know how many hours you spend in the office, hours you spend traveling, being away from your families to serve the Lord. And we want to say, may the good Lord bless you. Thank you. I've enjoyed working alongside you. Yes, we had spent time to prepare, starting from the executive committee to the Congress committee, and above all the staff members, and to the host country, and now to the team that had prepared this virtual Congress. Hard work has gone into this work. And I want to say to all of you, thank you so much. I cannot mention you all by names, but I want to say on behalf of the Baptist World Alliance, we appreciate the great work you have done. Thank you. And allow me just to express 
our sincere thanks to our staff. To Julie, to Kendra, to Monica, to Carolina, the director for the Congress, director for the communications, Mary Johnson. But I just want to say thank you. Thank you to Jenny Stewart, who has come along as the producer, to Elijah, who had led the work that God today has enabled us to have this Congress. To Jerry Carlo, who chaired that um, Congress committee, gone through so many meetings. Just want to say, on behalf of us all, we want to say to you a big thank you. We thank you that we're able to have this great week. We are blessed. Thank you to every speaker. Thank you to everyone who has worked in the technical team, the plenaries, those who have shared in the workshops, in the Bible study, in, in the main sessions. Thank you for what you've given to us this week. May God bless you and fill you up and continue to expand your ministries. It is now my greatest honor, my greatest pleasure and privilege to then do this public handover to my successor, to the current president of the World Alliance, to Thomas Mackey, the president of the Baptist World Alliance, who will serve us through to July 2025. Thomas, who is from Argentina, actually began his role in last July. But this is the first time that we could do this public handover. And therefore, I do this with great joy, with great satisfaction, to know that we are in good hands. Thank you, Thomas, for agreeing uh, to serve for hearing God and say, yes, Lord, here am I. I want to serve. God bless you. We're looking forward to the four years when you lead us. Um, and now it is time, my beloved sisters and brothers, to listen to our president, Dr. Thomas Mackey, sharing with us the theme the vision for this Conquenia. May the good Lord bless you, Thomas. We will be there to support, but to serve with you, and above all, to pray for you. May the good Lord bless you. Amen. The next years, the Bible says, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. As Baptist World Alliance, we have dreams, and they will only come true if we, each member body, and each church member, all of us, make the commitment to carry them all. The BWA is all of us. These are our dreams. The cross learned with brothers, and sisters from around the world to see the good that God produces in bringing together people who are isolated from each other, to articulate the message of faith and love in relation to the deep and diverse problems of life, to open the gates of each region of the world to the whole world so that each of us can see the whole world and not only one's territory. The BWA is a reflection of that word to show how the gospel is living the most diverse cultures, to hold an excellent communication system with the whole society, to reach all member bodies in their mother language and culture, 
to expand the network of the Global Baptist Family for Kingdom Impact, to include churches, conventions and unions, Baptist universities, and faith-based non-profit organizational ministries, to serve with a large variety of BWA members, and at the same time, with a strong unity among them, to worship and celebrate together with the whole Baptist family the accessibility of the law and his continuous assistance in all times and places, to continue to serve, making the needed corrections, discovering new ways that need to be learned, and keeping and deepening the old ways that continues to be useful today, improving our programs for the kingdom of God. To keep the program of the Baptist World Alliance going forward, supporting the General Secretary, Vice Presidents, leadership teams, regions, projects, and dynamics. To respond to disasters with material and spiritual resources in the most integral possible way. To contact those countries which are not yet represented in our body and look for ways to connect them to the BWA. To bring out the most useful resources for men, women, youth, and children. To be a pastoral and ethical community making the BWA a world reference institution in terms of the trust generated by its action. To learn from the growth, the efforts, and sacrifices of many Baptist communities who are working for reconciliation and conflict resolution. To bring a message and actions that contributes to justice, freedom, peace, solidarity, aid and development, human rights, religious freedom, and to the fight against racism in the world, keeping a loud prophetic voice, to care for the common house that God has created for us, to identify, promote, and train disciples to act locally and globally in close contact with local churches around the world, to form a theological thinking that responds to the message of the Bible and to the questions that society and culture pose, to hold a vision of the present and the future with a perspective of trust and hope. We appreciate and are grateful for all that we have received throughout our history as we are responsible for our present and our future to serve in the kingdom of God. To the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. I invite you to join me at the next Congress when we will meet face to face, Lord willing, in July 2025 in Brisbane, Australia. Welcome. The 22nd Baptist World Congress was for the very first time the first fully virtual Baptist World Congress. This has enabled Baptists from more countries than ever before to join together in worship and in mission. While it's been a powerful experience, there is something unique about meeting in person to be face to face, share meals, and to build friendships with brothers and sisters from around the world, to be encouraged challenged, and to serve on mission. Plans are now underway to gather together for the 23rd Baptist World Congress, God willing, in Brisbane, Australia in July 2025. We are excited to be working together with the teams at the Australian Baptist Ministries and the Baptist Union of Queensland. 
On behalf of Australian Baptist Ministries, we want to welcome you to come to Australia for the 23rd Baptist World Congress, which is going to be in July 2025. It's going to be held in Brisbane, a wonderful city, an exciting city, a place that's safe and has got great airports to come and fly from anywhere over the world. Please come. Can you imagine the whole Baptist family from around the world, the global family coming together? It'll be a wonderful time and I hope to see you there. Greetings from Brisbane, Australia. The venue chosen for the 2025 Congress is the Brisbane Convention and Entertainment Centre. This is a state-of-the-art conference venue on the banks of the Brisbane River, adjacent to the South Bank Recreation and Entertainment Precinct, with the main city centre right across the river. The Convention Centre has many flexible meeting rooms and exhibition halls with plenty of space for casual connecting with friends and colleagues. Within the centre and its surrounds, there are lots of restaurants with a wide variety of options for refreshments, dining and relaxation. There are also many different types of accommodation within a short distance of the Convention Centre and a very effective public transport system to help you get around. We're confident that this centre will provide a great venue for us to meet and share together. Baptists in Brisbane, across the state of Queensland, as well as those in other Australian states, are really looking forward to welcoming you to Australia in July 2025. We're anticipating a wonderful time of hearing from God together, enjoying fellowship, renewing old friendships, and making new ones. This will be a time to learn, to share, to be encouraged and challenged as fellow Baptists and as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Plan to join with your Baptist World family July 9 through 12, 2025 for the 23rd Baptist World Congress meeting in Brisbane, Australia. With pre-Congress conferences and mission opportunities, can I encourage you? Go ahead and reserve the full first week of July 2025 and I'll see you in Brisbane.
And as we begin to bring this Congress to a conclusion, we're going to enter into a powerful moment as we share the Lord's Supper. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one family. Gathered together right now for more than 100 countries, let's sing as we prepare our hearts. my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me I see his wounds his hands his feet my Savior on that cursed tree His body bound and drenched in tears They laid him down in Joseph's tomb The entrance sealed by heavy stone Messiah still and all the Oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will sing Your praise. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord our God. On the third, at break of dawn, the sun of heaven rose again. Oh, trample death, where is your sting? The angels roll for Christ the King. sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus face oh praise the name of the
together we're the people of God, together we're the body of Christ. We are scattered and the body of Christ is broken. And yet as we gather, the body of Christ is remembered. And so today we gather in a different way. In obedience to Jesus' command to remember and to share together in breaking bread and drinking wine in remembrance of the death of Christ. Gather us in, the lost and the lonely, the broken and the breaking, who long for the nourishment found at your feast. Gather us in, the done and the doubting, the wishing and the wondering, who long for the company found at your feast. Gather us in, the proud and pretentious, the sure and superior, who long for the leveling found at your feast. Gather us in, the bright and the bustling, the stirrers and the shakers, who long for the deeper joys found at your feast. Gather us in, to meet, to eat, be given a seat, be joined to the vine, be offered new wine, Become like the least, be found at the feast. Gather us in. Each piece of bread that we eat was once scattered across the fields. And the grain that God gave to grow has become for us the bread of life. Each sip of wine that we drink was once many vines. And the grapes that God gave to grow have become for us the new wine of God's kingdom. In our communion with one another, we are fed with the bread of heaven that sustains us. And we drink the wine of gladness that brings us joy. Here is the table of the Lord. We are gathered to his supper, a foretaste of things eternal. Bread for breaking wine poured for drinking, signs of his love and hospitality, symbols of his life broken, his blood poured out. He is not dead. He is risen and present among us, evidence of God's covenant grace and promise. So we come in faith to the table, you and I, companions on the journey. Some of us fresh and eager, others weary in need of nourishment, all of us conscious of our failings. Come now, don't hesitate. The feast is ready and the Lord himself invites you. Lord God, as we come to share the richness of your table, we cannot forget the rawness of the earth. We cannot take bread and forget those who are hungry. Your world is one world, and we are your stewards of its nourishment. Lord, put our prosperity at the service of the poor. We cannot take wine and forget those who are thirsty. The ground and the rootless, the earth and its weary people cry out for justice. Lord, put our fullness at the service of the empty. We cannot celebrate the feast of your family and forget our divisions. We are one in spirit. Lord, heal our church in every brokenness. Amen. God of all those who are scattered and broken, you call us to wholeness. We thank you for the love demonstrated in giving your son that we might be united with you. We thank you that in Christ you enter into the pain, the uncertainty, the fear of our world, and that your arms are open in loving embrace, gathering us as a shepherd gathers his flock. We thank you for bread and wine, symbols and signs for us today of your faithfulness to your people through all generations. Amen. Among friends gathered round the table, the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks for it, he broke it. And he 
said to them around the table, this is my body, that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. We eat to remember. Let us eat together. In the same way, Jesus took the cup. After supper said, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it and remember me. For the wine that makes hearts glad, God be blessed forever. For the wine that seals the covenant, God be blessed forever. Jesus, true and living vine, make hearts glad and lives safe. God, be blessed forever. Enliven us with the wine of the kingdom this day and always. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with your love and renew us with your life. We drink to remember. Let us drink together. And as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. The kingdom of God is justice and peace. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace. Where lies abound, you call us to speak truth. We will speak truth. Where greed takes all, you call us to act justly. We will act justly. Where violence consumes, you call us to live peacefully. We will live peacefully. Where death mocks us, you call us to live in Christ. We will live in Christ. We set aside our wisdom, our will, our words. We empty our hearts and bring nothing in our hands. We yearn for the healing, the holding, the accepting, the forgiving which Christ alone can offer. So may the peace of the Lord rest within us and remain with us today and always. Amen. Creating and redeeming God, we give you thanks and praise. Your covenant of grace was made for our salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we've eaten and drunk together, we come this day to covenant with you, covenant to love in all sincerity, loathing what is evil and clinging to what is good. Covenant to be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Covenant to share with those who are in need and practice hospitality. Covenant to bless those who persecute us and blessings and not cursing. Covenant to allow you to live in us the life of the kingdom. This day we give ourselves again to the Lord and to each other in fellowship and to work together in the unity of the Spirit for the sake of God's mission and justice. Pour, Pour your, your Spirit, spirit upon, upon us. us. Amen. Amen. Gathered from more than 100 countries, we shared together what was likely one of the most global celebrations of the Lord's Supper in our 400-year history as a Baptist movement. If we are united together as a Baptist family, it is because of an essential oneness in Jesus Christ. One Lord, one faith one baptism. If we are scattered, it is because of a commitment to God's mission. Each of us in our own communities, passionately living out God's holistic gospel. Every Baptist, a missionary. As this 22nd Baptist World Congress draws to a conclusion, would you hold this vision close to your heart? 
you belong to a worldwide family. Even when you do not sense that your brothers and sisters in Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, Europe, North America, and Latin America are standing together with you and calling all of us to a greater faith. Even when you do not sense it, the Holy Spirit is active in nurturing, deepening, maturing, and growing this family around the world together in Christ, together in mission. A mission to be lived out in the midst of poverty and hunger, religious restrictions and persecution, war and violence, doubt and disbelief, and among the many who have never heard the good news of Jesus Christ. Let this Congress be a launching point for a passionate recommitment for God's worldwide church living out God's worldwide mission. Mission that will require kingdom generosity. When you give to the BWA, you are giving to share the gospel, stand with the persecuted, and to support Baptists in aid, prayer, and in theological development. We are launching here at the BWA schools of evangelism, mission networks, aid networks, the Religious Freedom Center. We're launching prayer networks, racial justice initiatives, and theological training in 10 different languages. And we cannot do this without you. Would you give today? We've just shared a global communion. Let's share now in a global offering to support God's global mission. Some think, I don't have that much to give, but here at the BWA, we believe God is the great multiplier. During this Congress, my wife Amy and I have already made a donation to this global offering because we believe we need to raise resources in order to invest them into God's mission. Give today at baptistworld.org slash give. Would you be part of a surge of kingdom generosity? Mission that will require church partnership, united in Christ, commissioned to live as missionaries in our communities, our countries. The BWA still believes in the power of the local church and in of local churches partnering together. Your church can partner directly with the BWA in a network we call Global Impact churches, G-I-C, Global Impact Churches. Go to the website, baptistworld.org slash G-I-C. Will you lead your church to have a global impact? Mission that will require personal discipleship. Our most important priority is to walk with Jesus. Invest in your relationship with Jesus. Would you, would you pray with me that God will pour out His Spirit in a fresh way? If we're going to live out a vision of the whole gospel in the whole world, we need you. We're to live our lives with urgency and strategy, giving everything for God's kingdom. Would you ask the Lord to raise us up as his called and commissioned people? Let us move forward together in kingdom generosity, church partnership, and in a personal discipleship that embraces kingdom vision of God's mission. We belong together because we belong to Jesus Christ. And because we belong to Jesus Christ, we are called in the Holy Spirit, to God's global mission. As we have shared together, may we take a moment to commit ourselves into future service and action. I invite you to respond by referring to the prayer of response in your worship guide and saying the words and bold with me. We are called to be a worshiping community, offering all to God in prayer. We are called to be a missionary community, making known the redeeming love of God. We are called to be a sacrificial community, 
generously giving from all that God has given us. We are called to be an inclusive community, sharing the hospitality of God's kingdom with all. We are called to be a prophetic community, challenging powers that oppress and corrupt. As a gospel people, let us covenant together before God and each other. Pour down your spirit on us. Help us so to walk in your ways that the promises we make this day and the life that we live together may become an offering of love, our duty and delight. Truly glorifying to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This day we give ourselves again to the Lord and to each other to be bound together in fellowship and to work together in the unity of the Spirit for the sake of God's mission. Amen. As part of our time of commitment, we want to take this opportunity to recognize and pray for those who are taking on particular responsibilities for the Baptist World Alliance. My fellow officers who have been called to serve alongside me until 2025. These folks are the officers of the BWA for this time and come from across the globe. I'm grateful for their time and commitment to serving the BWA in this way. The first Vice President, Carl Johnson, from the Caribbean, from Africa, Samson Ayon Kulde, Elijah Juanje, and Elizabeth Mbula, from Asia Pacific, John Hickey, Rachel Tan, and Dave Wack, also from Caribbean, Joel Dorsenville, from Europe, Otniel Bunacio, and Lina Sawan, from North America, Jennifer Lau, and Albert Regis, from Latin America, Fernando Brandao, and Noemi Johnson Lidak, our treasurer, Carolyn Fossil, and our General Secretary, Elijah Brown. And now, I would like to ask Paul, our immediate past president, to pray for us in our responsibilities and ministry. It is a great honor, my beloved sisters and brothers, to now come before the Lord as we commissioned, as we dedicate to God these great leaders who will be leading the world alliance in this convention. Would you join with me as we pray for you? Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you, thanking you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, O oh God, for each and every one of these, our sisters and brothers, who are now being called to serve as the officers of the Baptist world alliance. You have called them at a time as this. Thank you for each and every one of them. And thank you for the gifts that you've given them. Thank you, Lord, for their willingness and their commitment to follow Jesus our Lord. And we pray that by your grace, enable them to serve. Holy Spirit, come afresh upon each and every. Anoint them, empower them. Oh God, ignite your fire in them. Let them, God, receive new strength. Let them, God, Father, know that you are with them. 
And I pray that now, Lord, would you make your face to shine upon them. Bless them, O oh God. Keep them far. Guide them. Equip them. Lead them, O oh God. Holy Spirit of God, they need your wisdom. Cover them. Fill them with your power, your love, and with God, your unity. That your name be glorified through their midst. I commit them, Lord, to your grace. May they know that you are with them as they serve, O oh God. May they, God, continue to experience your power through this time of service. Pray God a special protection upon their families, upon God their congregations. Be with them, O God. Use them. We dedicate them to your Father. In the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Thought it. 
day or the night Waking or sleeping Your presence, my light Be thou my wisdom Be thou my true word I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. You, my great Father, and I, your true child. Once for away, but by love reconciled. My sword for the fight, be thou my dignity, thou my delight, thou my soul shelter, and thou my high tower. Raise thou me heavenward, O power of my power. Encourage the exhausted and strengthen the feeble. Say to those with anxious hearts, Take courage, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. He will save you. He will save you. The eyes of the blind will be opened. The ears of the deaf will be unstopped. The tongue of the mute will shout for joy. The thirsty ground spring up with water. And a highway will be there, a roadway. And it will be called the Highway of Holiness. And they will come with joyful shouting to Zion. With everlasting joy upon their heads. They will find gladness and joy. And sorrow and sighing will flee away. Have you forgotten the Lord your God? Have I forgotten the Lord my God? Have we forgotten the Lord our God? 
For I am the Lord your God, who stirs up the sea and its waves roar. I have covered you with the shadow of my hand. You are my people. Then fix this firmly in your mind. You too will have sorrow. But I will see you again. You are going to be deep in mourning while the godless world throws a party. You will be sad, very sad. Long enough I have carried this trouble. Long enough have I lived with the stomach full of pain. Be gracious to me, O oh Lord. Long enough. For I am in distress. Be kind to me, God. I am in deep, deep trouble. I will see you again, and your sadness will develop into gladness. I have cried my eyes out. It will? I promise you. And your heart will rejoice. It will. No one will take your joy. No one. I promise you. Strengthen me, O oh Lord. Hear my cry. For the people went away to celebrate. For they understood the words which had been made known to them. When my anxious thoughts multiply within me, thy consultations delight my soul. When I am upset and beside myself, you calm me down and cheer me up. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy thanking our God. Who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. Spilling out, flowing over, for the people went away to celebrate what they understood. After the sorrow, after the tears, I promise you. After the rain, I promise you. After the storm, after the sorrow, I will give thanks to you forever. You did it. You changed wild lament into whirling dance. Whirling dance. You ripped off my black morning band and decked me with wildflowers. Wild flowers. Let all who take refuge in thee, let them be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Let the party last all night. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart exalts thee and with my song, I shall thank him. My heart dances for thee. I am jumping for joy and shouting my thanks to thee. I'm about to burst with song. I can't keep quiet about you. God, my God. I can't thank you enough. No one takes your joy from you. A place for our pain. A place for our pain. They will obtain gladness and joy, and sorrow and sighing will flee. Have you forgotten the Lord, your maker, who stretched out his hand to you? And they shall come and shout for joy on the height of Zion and their life shall be like a watered garden, and they shall never languish Life's again. Down. After the tears, after the sorrow, after the breaking, I promise there, there will, will be, be dancing. dancing. I promise there will be dancing. Praise the Lord, everybody. We got a message to encourage you and let you know that no matter what you're going through, there's still glory coming, and it's coming after this. Clap your hands, come on! Hallelujah! We want to encourage you tonight. Come on, YP, sing it. There will be glory. There will be glory after this. Hallelujah. And there will be victory.
touch your life and think it's impossible. A view from above, Jeremiah 29, verses 11 through 14. Jeremiah was on Judah's most uninvited speakers list because his message was so abrasive. He would preach in such a way that it would bruise the sensitive skin of the nation of Judah. Concisely put, Jeremiah's message to them was this. In 70 years, you will be in captivity in Babylon because of your incessant addiction to idolatry. Jeremiah was perhaps one of the most disclosing and most self-revealing prophets in all of the history of the prophets of Israel. He did not mind you opening up his rib cage and taking his pulsating heartbeat. He would allow you to eavesdrop on his soliloquies, his self-conversations. When you did that, you would hear him say in Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 1, Oh, that my head were waters and my eyes were a fountain of tears. I'd weep day and night for the daughters of my people. And then another time you would hear him in his despair. And he would say in Jeremiah 9 and 2, Oh, that I could find an end in the desert where I could be away from these people. He would allow you to see him measure his own ministry. He asks himself a question in chapter 8, verse 22. He says, Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? If I am the physician of Judah and I am administering the bomb, the medicine, the word of God to my people, then why is it that they are consistently spiritually sick? It is Howard Thurman, the African-American theologian, mystic prophet, in his work, Deep River, the Negro spiritual speaks of life and death, who says that the Negro, the African-American, looked at this question of Jeremiah and straightened the question mark out and turned it into an exclamation point and reversed the first two words. No longer is it, is there a bomb in Gilead, but there is a bomb in Gilead that can make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead that can heal the sin-sick soul. We must have a theology of there is rather than one of is there. No wonder Charles Albert uh, Tindley, a Methodist pastor who pastored the Tindley Memorial Methodist Church, as it is named today in Philadelphia, uh, wrote the, the hymn, Someday. He pins these words, harder yet may be to fight, right may often yield to might, wickedness a while may reign, Satan's cause may seem to gain. There is a God who rules above with hands of power and heart of love. And if I'm right, he'll fight my battles. I shall be free someday. 
I do not know how long it will be, nor what the future holds for me. But this I know, if Jesus leads me, I shall be free someday. Jeremiah writes to these people to let them know that their stay in Babylon is for instructional purposes along with others. In other words, they're not to ask so much how long will we be there or when will we get out of Babylon, but rather to ask what are we to get out of Babylon? What lessons are we to learn while we are there? They are to understand that their 70 year stay in Babylon is irrevocable. It will not be annulled. It will not be canceled. It will not be truncated or abbreviated. They will stay there for 70 long years. And then their stay in Babylon is not final or terminal. God will bring them out after 70 years because he made a promise to Abraham back in Genesis 12, 1 through 3, that not only would Abraham have a new name in terms of his name being changed, but new descendants, a new land. Ah, from that land, the Messiah will come. And therefore, though the promise of God is threatened, it is never taken and being thwarted in its real sense. Yes, the children of Israel will stay in bondage in Egypt for 400 years. The promise will be threatened, but it will not be thwarted for God will bring them out. Yes, the children of Israel will stay in the wilderness for 40 years wandering. Uh, the promise will be threatened, uh, but not uh, thwarted because God will bring them out. And yes, the children of Israel will stay in Babylon for 70 long years, and the promise will be threatened, but not thwarted, because God will bring them out, because the Messiah will be born in that land who will come to save the people from their sins. There is this matter of inherited debt. Uh, verse 4, verse 7, and verse 10, uh, or verse 14 rather, tells us this, God carried them into exile. God carried them. Uh, there is inherited debt there, however, because there is a part of the population that had nothing to do uh, with them being in Babylon. They had not participated in uh, any kind of idolatrous worship and behavior. These are babies who will be born in Babylon. These are young children who would be raised in Babylon. They inherited that debt from those who were their parents and others in the community that broke the first of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. Brothers and sisters, these are people who will most likely return to Jerusalem and Judah. They were young enough to live throughout the 70 year Babylonian captivity. This is inherited debt. We too inherit debt. Why? Because we live in a fallen world. Uh, because the world has fallen, we have natural uh, disasters. We have hurricanes. We have coronavirus and we all uh, have been affected by it. Uh, and even Paul says in the chapter of Romans verse 22, the whole creation is groaning, travailing, waiting until its deliverance. And that will only come during the eschaton when the former things will pass away. No more death, no more mourning, no more crying, no more tears. Because God will get rid of the things that have plagued us and create a new order for us to live in sinlessness and in painlessness. There is inherited debt, but there's also this matter of imperatival industry. It's work. Verse 5 tells us they are to build houses, they are to plant vineyards, and they are to participate in marriage so that they can have children, and the population is not to de decrease. It is imperatival industry. They are to work. There's a group of people uh, among them 
who are part of the youth movement and the young adult movement from 13 perhaps to 25 years of age, maybe 30 years of age. There's a possibility that they will live throughout the Babylonian captivity. They will be old, of course, uh, uh, 90s perhaps, uh, late 80s, but uh, they will probably survive it and come back to Jerusalem and Judah and see the temple rebuilt and the walls were built and the religious order reestablished. But they have to work. Now, there is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 10 and 11, this idea of uh, uh, debt that is no longer there, but it is inherited credit. Because God says to Moses to tell the children of Israel that they are going to arrive in Canaan where they will live in houses that they didn't build and they will eat from gardens they didn't plant and they will drink from wells that they did not dig. That's inherited credit. And yet these people will be living uh, in a land in which there is inherited debt. And how do you deal with both when you had inherited credit and now you're dealing with inherited debt? They must not take and, uh, take and use of uh, this situation for time of mourning. That's really what happens to a part of that population in Psalm 137 verses one through four. By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willow trees in the midst thereof. For they are they that carried us away captive, required of us a song. And they who wasted us required of us mirth, that is entertainment, saying, sing for us one of the songs of Zion. How can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? No, they must not take and pity themselves and be listless and inactive. They must sing the Lord's song in a strange land because even though the temple of God was destroyed, the God of the temple still reigns. And so to listen to Jesus tell us that we must work the works of him who sent us while it is day, the night's coming when no one can work we must participate in carrying out God's agenda in our own locale so that it affects the entire world. But there is also this idea of long-term interests. Verse number seven. Verse number seven tells us that God says in this letter that Jeremiah writes to these captives that you are to take and pray for the prosperity of the city. And you ought to pray for the peace of the city because as the city uh, is prosperous, so will you be prosperous. This matter of praying while you are in captivity to your captors, it is a matter of long-term interest. Why? Because you have young people who must survive the Babylonian captivity. You must continue to work and strive so that you pass on to them certain traits and attributes and characteristics so that they can carry on when they move to Jerusalem and uh, Judah after you have died, they'll be able to carry on the work. It is exactly what Paul is saying in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2. He says to Timothy, those things that you've seen in me commit to reliable persons who are able to teach others. And so, therefore, young people need to be taught so that they can carry on the work when we are gone. God will bury his workers, but he will never bury his work. I was preaching at a church uh, a few years ago, and I received a letter that was written to me that speaks of how God takes and uh, carries on his work because he has plans for those who would carry on that work. Pastor Smith, last August you gave a sermon at the summer series of our church. We were just about the chicken out of adoption. We felt called to begin. Uh, we were scared, we were terrified, and we were finding every financial excuse to ignore the call that we felt heavy on our hearts. You spoke on August the 14th. The story about your son and your grief and your ability to keep on trusting the Lord told us that there was nothing to fear. And we went home and signed our papers to begin the adoption process that day. Early two weeks later to the minute, a little girl who was found abandoned in an alley in the Muslim country of Africa, Harar, claimed our attention. 
She was starving, sick, bleeding from both ears and non-responsive. She was six pounds and six months. She was our little girl, Miriam. We adopted her. A few days later, a pregnant woman was gathering firewood an hour and a half walk from her desolate, impoverished village. She saw a pack of baboon monkeys playing rough with something on the ground. As she got closer, she realized that something was a brand new baby and his leg had been gassed open by baboon claws. She gathered him in her arms and headed back to her village. She petitioned the other women of the village to breastfeed the baby until they could find a way to get him to the police. She kept him in her home for two weeks and considered keeping him to raise him as a good Muslim baby. Uh, she named him Apsa, which means poor baby, gift from God. The fact that she had already had six children and was about to deliver her seventh, along with the declining health of the boy, he led her to bring him into the city. The Lord did. That boy was our son, Moses. We adopted him. God has a plan for our lives. I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And so it is that God had a plan for these people. They would come out from 70 years of captivity. They would now be transplanted back in the soil of their own land. And there on in that land, Jesus would be born. Yes, this is the one who would take off his royal diadem and put it in the hat rack of heaven. This is the one who would take off uh, his royal robe and put it in the closet of eternity. This is the one who would take off his shoes of dignity and put them underneath the hall trees of time and catch a train of nature and ride it for nine long months and get off at a town called Bethlehem of Judea. And this is the one who would die on the cross one Friday and three days later get up from the grave with all power in his hand and 40 days later take a cloud and ascend back to heaven and sit on the right hand of his father. And this is the one who will come back again and gather his children so much so that people from every nation, tribe, kindred, and tongue will be there and we will praise him for our eternity. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Behold, I am making Behold, everything I am new. making everything new. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit to a valley filled with bones. They were scattered everywhere and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, Son of man, can these bones become living people again? He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed and they will put their trust in the Lord. I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. Anyone who trusts in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. But all who have been united with Christ in baptism have put on Christ, like putting on new clothes. Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. So I spoke the message, and there was a great rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together and attached themselves as complete skeletons. Muscles and flesh formed over the bones, then skin formed to cover their flesh, but they still had no breath in them. I am about to do something new. Look, I have already begun. Do you not see it? I will create a pathway through the wilderness. I will create rivers in a dry wasteland. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ 
is a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to the winds, son of man. Speak and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. O oh, breath, come from the four winds and breathe into these dead bodies so they may live again. The day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people. This commandment will not be like the one I made with their ancestors. They broke that covenant. Though I love them like a husband loves his wife. We died with Christ in his baptism. And just as he was raised to life through the glorious power of the Father, we also may live new lives. So I spoke the message as commanded, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. But this new covenant that I make with the people of Israel after those days, says the Lord, I will put my instructions deep within them. I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they will be my people. After supper, Jesus took another cup of wine and said, This is the new covenant between God and his people. An agreement poured out for the people. Through the Prophesied to them and say, This is what the sovereign Lord says. I'm going to put my spirit in you, and you will live again. Then you will return home to the land of Israel. Truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, a plentiful harvest of new life. When this happens, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. I will give you a new heart and I will put a new spirit in you. I will take out your stony, stubborn heart, and I will give you a tender, responsive heart. For you will be born again, not from a life that will quickly end. Your new life will last forever, because it comes from the eternal, living word of God. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And then I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, he's come to make a new home among his people, and he will wipe all the tears from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow, crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. And the one seated on the throne said, Behold, I am Behold, making everything. I am Behold, I am making everything. 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 Behold, I am making everything.
first cry till final breath Jesus commands my destiny No power of hell, no scheme of man Can ever pluck me from his hands Till he returns or calls me home Here in the power of Christ I Christ, as we come to the close of our Congress, we want to bring you glory and thank you for the Wider Baptist family for the time we have had this week to meet together to celebrate, share, learn, and fellowship. While we have missed not being face to face, we thank you for the ability we have had to connect in new ways. Keep us faithful to the ways you have challenged us this week. May the God who created a world of diversity and vibrancy go with us as we embrace life in all its fullness. May we go out together into God's world as disciples of Jesus Christ and messengers of the gospel. May we continue to be a prophetic people working for justice, resisting violence and challenging the abuse of power. May we love with all sincerity, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, as we look forward in hope to the coming of our Savior. And now, may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Our celebration and worship is ended. Our service begins. Go in peace. Together. Standing together. We at ChurchNet are standing together with our Global Baptist family. Servus, Cesar Sotomayor, Osustreich, Via Halten Susam. And you know, dead. Stand up together. It's a Poland. We are standing together. Song Sibanye. Saludos desde Venezuela. Estar juntos. Standing together. We are staying together. Juntos. Tu va poche, tu ima de De pie, juntos. Standing together. We team up together. We team up together. We team up together. Standing together. Juntos. Juntos. Standing together. Tenons-nous ensemble. Minamia titre de tout. Seis ama goals. Standing together. Guasimama Pamoja. Kibwei nepepe. Standing together. Standing together. Seguimos en pie. Hay cookie one mina papisa. Ich bin Ali Ansari aus Österreich. And I'm Olivia Haynes from America. Und wir halten zusammen. Asad, you know what I'm doing? Laulen. Kalisini Labaradam. 
Stem entre una. Manteniéndonos juntos. Standing together. Let the cake. Three million people. Standing together. Nadikari plaga on sakumsa. Standing together. Ensemble. Nous tenons. Greetings from Telangana Baptist Convention Secretary. Kalase nilabadam. De pie juntos. Makasama tayong lahat. So mite pauna ka so ang peace bang nawin teka ti bang ina tuun pen sep hop. Din hop honi standing together. Thank you. Wali juto ha. Wakina ma. Let's stand together. Kalase nilabadam. Telangana Baptist Convention for the World. On behalf of the Baptist World Alliance team and our global Baptist family, 241 member bodies in 126 countries and territories around the world, thank you for being part of the historic 22nd Baptist World Congress. Together, we are impacting the world for Christ. Through. 